Ricky, uh, you were manager in Jamestown, and what years were you manager? Actually, I was there 68 and 69. It, uh, I was with the Red Sox. I'd stay with the big club until the rookie season kicked in, and of course, they'd make all the signees out of high school, college, and I'd go down and manage the club. Then uh, this was a short season league? Right, it was what they call the rookie club, and uh, it was all their signees. It, uh, it maybe it played a little higher classification. It uh, was not doing the job. Sent them back down to the rookie club and also with the high school and, and college players. Do you recall some of the ball players you had on the team with you? Well, actually, I had three players that turned out to be pretty good off that club. And uh, of course, I had uh, Ben Ogilvy, uh, Dwight Evans, and Cecil Cooper. So you have to be proud of the fact that three players like this come out of the Jamestown area and in the rookie club. So it uh, doesn't happen to. I recall Jamestown as a great place, a uh, ballpark I thoroughly enjoyed. And this is my first managing job, so I always have a lot of memories of Jamestown. Oh, what kind of meal money did they have at that time? Do you recall? I think it was five dollars, if I remember correctly. And uh, so, obviously, if you get five dollars, there's a lot of hamburgers and cheeseburgers involved. <laughs> and and uh, so, you didn't sit down to a lot of, a lot of spreads. And, and I think, uh, if I recall correctly, that uh, a lot of players that were living in the homes with families and stuff, I'm sure they got a lot of home cooked meals there also. What about the uh, who actually owned the ball players? Was that the Red Sox at the time, or would the team? Like the Jamestown team have the contracts with the individual? No, they were actually owned by the Red Sox. And uh, I remember this, to the uh, fact we could only put 25 players on the roster. And each day, you had to change your roster. And what I mean by this, you would, on your lineup cards, you had to list all 25 players that were going to play. And we had about 45 players. And so it was quite a chore to take all your players and put them in uniform and switch them back. Any anecdotes that you can remember, uh, the, you know, 68, 69, that sort of road trips that uh, you can recall that were kind of a humorous? Or, or there's... Well, there were a lot of times, obviously, back in those days, buses would break down. Uh, maybe you go to the hotel rooms, or it wasn't quite like you were entering wrist crawls and somewhere, but uh, it would be tough to get that many players into motels or hotels. And so it was, uh, it's like a lot of things. Uh, in the lower classification of minor leagues. You have fun, you never forget it, but the higher you get, the easier it becomes to play baseball. This was a Class D at the time? No, it was a rookie club, Class A. Class A. Which is actually the same as D, but uh, uh, actually now they have three different classifications of A, and they have guys that have played a couple of years, they put them in a higher classification of A, and uh, this was basically for the young players out of high school and college again. Now, who are the owners of the club then? Do you recall, Shaky? Well, uh, Actually, I don't. I know that uh, I dealt with uh, Jess and Bonnie quite a bit. Uh, if I recall, I... Uh, with Eric Gogan and Russ? Eric Gogan. Russ was there. And uh, the secretary, Bonnie, uh, I can't recall her last Nelson, week. I believe. Bonnie Nelson. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it was kind of a three-man show. And they obviously an outstanding job. They had a lot of players in and out and, and a lot of players moving. So. It, uh, it was a good operation. I enjoyed it. All right, give us a quick capsulization. After 69, you left the, uh, the, the managerial ship of Jamestown. What happened to Jackie Moore? Well, I had a call from Dave Bristol, which was managing Seattle at the time, and uh, offered me a job to come to the big leagues, and it didn't take me long to accept Except this job. And it was with Seattle. We go to spring training, and I could probably say that I was coach with Seattle never made it to Seattle. That was the year that uh, they moved the franchise back to Milwaukee, America. <laughs> In fact, he came down to uh, spring training. They sent their equipment truck out and hey, Dave, gave him a destination, told him to call back to spring training to see what direction to go. And uh, they called back and they sent him to Seattle, uh, hey, Dave, Milwaukee instead of Seattle. Yeah. Terrific. And from there? From there, I had three years in uh, Milwaukee. I had a chance to come to Texas, which I'm also with Texas now. Spent uh, five years with Texas. Uh, Herzog, Martin, Left Texas, went to Toronto for three years, came back to Texas in 80. Uh, went to Oakland in 81 with Billy again, Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up managing club for the A's from 84, 85, and part of 86. And then I went from the A's to Montreal for three years. Uh, Cincinnati, three years, which we ended up being the world's champions in 1990. Sure. And from there, I uh, had a chance to come home again, which this year in Texas. So I've been in the big leagues since uh, well, since 1970, I've been very fortunate. Oh, that's terrific. Well, thank you. Any, any sort of, uh, uh, I'm going to show this to Russ, and I'm going to show this to Bonnie. Uh, any kind of statement that you want to make to them? Well, I just thank them and appreciate all the 
all the help. Uh, I've never forgotten him. I know I don't stay in contact with him like I should. Bonnie would drop a note every so often, and I, and I was really happy to receive it. And uh, Les and Bonnie, if you ever have time, drop the note, and, and I would love to hear from you and find out what's going on, and I just wish them all the best.